Hi team, welcome to this video. Here we're going to be looking at job templates within Zero Practice Manager. Now job templates are one of the most important parts of getting right when you're setting up your XPM, and that's because they are going to be used for creating jobs. Now a job template gives the ability to apply a default set of tasks, costs and milestones to a job when it is created. We're not gonna be worrying about milestones, we're not gonna be using those uh, in XPM. Your costs we are gonna be using, and absolutely we're gonna be using your tasks. So it's very, very important to make sure we get our templates set up correctly. So to provide a bit more context of how we're going to use these is we're going to be creating our engagements in Practice Ignition. And Practice Ignition is when it's, the proposal is accepted, it creates a job in Zero Practice Manager for you. Now when we create that proposal in Practice Ignition, we're going to be applying services to that proposal. So our, we might have a proposal that we send to a client which is going to have three services. It could be annual accounts, it could be GST returns, and it could be coaching, like quarterly coaching. Now, for that, for our annual accounts, we might have uh, that service would be mapped to a job template within Zero Practice Manager called annual accounts. Then we have GSTs, or you might have VAT, or BAS, or something like that, or payroll, something along those lines. So that, that GST service will be mapped to a GST job template within XPM. Then the quarterly coaching service would be matched to the quarterly coaching job template within XPM. Now, so we've got this engagement that has three services in it. When that's accepted, it's going to create a job within Zero Practice Manager. Those services will look at what job templates they're matched, they're mapped to, and it's going to create the job using those job templates. So this is why it's very important here. So we may want to have, in this example, we may want to have a job template with, for annual accounts with two tasks on it for called annual accounts preparation, annual accounts review. So those are two tasks that would sit against the job template. And that job template is mapped to the service which sits at an engagement level. We may want to have six tasks for our GST because we're filing every two months. So you'd have GST, April, May, you'd have GST, June, July, all the way through the whole year. So when that job is accepted, sorry, when that engagement is accepted, the service maps through to the GST uh, job template, and then those six tasks that are on that job template will be created on this job. So in effect, we're going to have this job created from the engagement, so the engagement's accepted, and on this job we're going to have annual accounts preparation, annual accounts review for the first template. We're going to have six GST tasks, that is assigned to that, that next template. And then finally, we might have four quarterly coaching tasks. So this one job will have all of those tasks that have come through from those three templates that were mapped to those three services. So I hope that all makes sense. It's very, very important to understand that as a workflow. So that's what's gonna happen with all of our annual engagements. We're also gonna be using our job templates for when we create our one-off jobs. You might have a, a job that just, just comes in, a quick phone call. You might need a general queries job or something like that or, or just other templates that we can apply very quickly because there may be situations where we don't use practice ignition to create the job would create them straight into XPM and that's where we would use the job templates as well but 99% of the time we want to be creating our jobs from an accepted engagement in practice ignition so when we set up our job templates which we're about to do in a moment I want you to keep that in mind that these templates are going to be matched to the services that we create in practice ignition those services are going to be what makes up our proposals all makes sense right cool let's jump in we'll check it out right so here we are in my zero practice manager demo company now to check out our job templates we're going to go to our business down to settings and then we're going to go to job settings and then on the right hand side here we have job templates now, what we want to do is set up job templates to represent the services that we're going to set up in Practice Ignition. So there's going to be two different sorts. One is going to be task related. We're also going to have some cost related ones. We don't uh, mix those together. And I'll explain each of those uh, in detail now. So let's start with the tasks. So think about the different services that you have in set up job templates. So for example, we've got this one here, two monthly GST. That's a service that we offer our clients. Every two months we file a GST return on behalf of our client. So you might be doing payroll, you might be doing BAS, you might be doing VATs, whatever that is. So I've got the template name, two monthly GST. Now the job category of left blank. Now you've got a number of options here. What you can do is you can have this set to billable fees uh, compliance because it's compliance work. But 
Uh, under practice ignition, uh, at the time of making this video, you can't allocate a engagement to have a job category, therefore that needs to be updated manually once the job is created in XPM. They're looking at updating that very soon, but at this stage, uh, that is something you're gonna need to man manually allocate. So it does give you the option of putting in billable fees right here, so when the when you're going to create the jobs directly in XPM, it's automatically going to take that job category. So up to you how you want to approach that job category. Uh, I tend to just leave them blank at this stage because we're waiting on practice ignition to be able to deploy those job categories automatically uh, straight through into the job. So completely up to you what you want to do with your categories. Now, coming down a little bit further, we have no milestones. Never use milestones as your job categories. They end up becoming a bit overwhelming and just create noise and clutter in your XPM. Your tasks, this is what I want to focus on here. So we've got our, uh, our six GST returns. Now, let me click into one of these. So the task is GST, and then I've used the label to differentiate the different period here. So you can see April, May is the period or the filing period that we're looking at. And I've put a default time in here at two hours. Make sure that's left as billable, you want to make sure that's checked, and then you're going to hit save. So just to explain a couple of these things, the default time, you're going to have a default time for each of these tasks. Now in reality, when you're doing different sets of work for different clients, the estimated time is going to change. Now we're going to deal with that at a scheduling level, and we're going to deal with how we do that later in this program. At the moment you want to put some default time in here, which is a bit of a guess, or a, a, a general idea of how much time that each task is going to take. So I put two hours for all of my GST returns. Now I've also got to do items here. What you can do is for the GST, you might want to put um, a, a checklist here. So it could be information received from client, uh, reconciliations done, and then filed with the uh, IRD. You could put that in there. I find that uh, to-do lists can be good, but they can create clutter. So I'll let you uh, make a decision for yourself whether you want to use to-do items or not. But that just essentially just creates a checklist under the task. So perhaps uh, set some to-do items up, go and create a job using this template and see how they look and see if you like them or not. Uh, I tend to leave them blank, however. Hit save. So what I've got here is I've got six tasks on this job template. So we're gonna create a service and practice ignition called two monthly GST. It's gonna to map to this template. So when we create a job from that proposal, it's gonna create a job with these six tasks on it. And no, I've got no costs and no milestones here. Great, so that's an example of a task that has multiple periods. We're gonna use the, the task name will be the task and we're using the label to differentiate the different periods. Now, annual accounts, so that could be our financial statements and tax returns or whatever that is for you. Now what I've done here is I've got annual accounts preparation and annual accounts review. Rather than just having one task, I've broken it out, out into two tasks. That's because we want to have a different person doing the preparation than the review. So for scheduling purposes, we want to, we want to schedule them out differently. Now, you, you can roll them into one that's not cause, going to cause an issue, and you can also have multiple people assigned to each task. Uh, my preference, however, is to break your annual accounts work into these two different uh, phases here. But we want them to be under the same job template because whenever we do annual accounts, there's always a preparation element and there's always a review element. And I've just estimated that time at 12 hours and two hours. Now, obviously, if we're working on a massive client's file, we need to update that to 50 hours. We do that when we're doing our scheduling and our capacity planning rather than doing it at a job template level. Otherwise, we end up with a million job templates with different times in here. So it's best to just put some default times in and leave it at that. So you want to go through and create all of your job templates to represent the different services that we're going to be quoting in Practice Ignition. So as you can see here, I've got my payrolls, uh, budgeting and cash flow, company liquidations, uh, all sorts here. I've got my coaching. Now that deals with all of our tasks. That's all the work that we're going to do. Now we also need to talk about disbursements and costs. We also want to set up some templates for our um, software subscriptions. Now, when you send your client a proposal, you may be quoting them for the services you're going to do, which could be GSTs, it could be payrolls, it could be coaching, it could be annual accounts, that's your services. You may also be quoting them on some software subscriptions. So if you're going to bundle your Zero subscription into that fee that you're charging your client, you've got to think that that is revenue that we're recognizing for the Zero subscription fee, because you're paying that on your client's behalf. Therefore, if we're recognizing revenue, which we recognized on the job, we need to recognize the corresponding cost on that job. Otherwise, we overflate our profits and our write-ups on the job. So we need to include a cost to represent the cost that went out to zero. We do that through our job templates as well. So I've got one here. 
zero standard license. If I click into this, you'll see here they've got zero standard license is the template name. And then I've got one cost on here called zero business edition annual. Now I've got a cost set up in my cost database for $720. And that is the cost that we've pulled. I'll click in and show you how this works. So this is searching my database of costs that I have in my database. And I'll put one unit. So I know that my cost has a cost of $720 and a billable also of 720. But what's important here is we're putting one unit of that on the job when it's created. Now this is a very, very important point here. We want to make sure that these come through as estimated costs and not actual costs. The reason is, is when the job's created, it's going to create all of our services based on the services and the job templates that they map to. Those are all of our tasks. Then it's also going to create job costs based on these templates as well. Now these costs, we want to apply them as estimated costs so they don't create a work in progress entry for us. Otherwise, when we roll our jobs over, all of these costs that are actual would spike our work in progress and it's going to ruin our work in progress reporting. We put them in as estimated costs and when we close the job out at that stage we mark it as an, as an actual cost and at that stage it becomes work in progress and then we'll do our whip wash up and close the job out. I'll explain that in a lot more detail when we get into the project management part of this program but at this stage all you need to know is that you need to create your job templates to represent the different software subscriptions you on charge to your clients and make sure you have them flagged as job costs are estimated and not actuals. Right, so there's a bit of information to take in there. In summary, you want to think about stepping back and that whole process. You're going to create proposals and practice ignition, which are going to have multiple services. Those services are going to map to a single job template each. Those job templates will have tasks, multiple tasks, which will be applied to the job when the job is created by practice ignition. We also want to ha have a think about our software subscriptions that we on charge to our clients. If we're doing that, and we're charging for them in our engagements, we also need to have the corresponding cost on the job. So we need to set those up in our cost database and create job templates, which maps to the services and make sure they are flagged as estimated costs. So when practice ignition creates the job, it creates the cost as estimated costs, which means our whip won't be spiked by the amount of that cost. I hope that all makes sense. There's something that's very important to get right. So if you do have any questions, let us know in the chat below and I'll see you in the next video.